Welcome to this uh, first four weeks uh, of the business data management course. Uh, in these four weeks, uh, we are going to be uh, working very closely with Professor Suresh Babu, who will introduce us to the concepts that we use uh, that come from the area of economics. So, Suresh Babu is a professor of economics in the humanities department at IIT Madras, and he will try and explain to us uh, in layman's language, hopefully. Um, how uh, economics, both macro and microeconomics, how the context of ec the economics provides the context for us to discuss businesses, right? Yeah. And the, the data that comes up arises in businesses, how that is grounded in the principles of economics yeah. and how the people in economics, how do they look at data sets and how do they work with data sets and all these kind of things we want to look at. Of course, we have only four weeks to do it. and this challenge, I think Professor Suresh Babu has done an excellent job of putting together the material so that we can understand it in four weeks. So, today uh, Suresh, we want to understand, you know, the, broadly if you start, somewhere you have to start, right? The, yeah. Where does economics start from? I mean, something, there has to be some foundational principles yeah. with which economics tries to understand the world of business, right? I mean, uh, yeah. where do you start? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Basically, in any economy, there are five uh, activities that are taking place simultaneously. And when I say simultaneously, this is real-time activities that are taking place. And these five activities actually drive the economy at any, any particular point in time. What are these five activities? There is always production that is taking place. Right. There is always consumption that is taking place. For this production and consumption to take place, there should be exchange, continuous exchange of goods and services. What is exchange? I mean, how exchange means whatever is produced will be consumed by some consumers and in return, they will have to give the value of that product to the producer. And that process of exchange is ex extremely important because it is that process of exchange which actually drives production and consumption in an economy. Okay. Along but the producer can also be a consumer, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We will. And we a will, consumer uh, can also be a producer. Huh? Yeah. We will come to that in a in a minute in a very simple kind of a schematic okay, presentation. Okay. But uh, along with exchange, there is a there is a process of distribution that takes place, and that is exactly. So when you say exchange, it's like butter. I mean, it, it historically, can be, it can be people used to of, trade spices. Yeah. India supposedly yeah. sent spices to. Yes. Europe and got in return from the Europe yeah. all kinds of things. It, it could be in terms of exchange in terms of commodities to another commodity okay. or it could be in terms of exchange in terms of money that is there is a value for a commodity that is determined and you pay the money for that value okay. that you have determined. Now along with this exchange uh, there is a process of distribution that is taking place and that is exactly the, the, the point that you were asking Professor GB that is when we are exchanging actually uh, goods and services are changing hands. Mm. B, along with goods and services, there is the process of resources also moving. Yeah. For example, when a household actually purchases something from a firm, which mm. has been produced by the firm, mm. and when we see firm as, as a producer and household as a consumer, mm. when the household purchases something, household gives the firm in return money. Right. So, there is a process of resource distribution that is taking place. The resource that is money which was available with the household now has gone to the producer. Sorry, sir. So, every exchange then has also an underlying distribution. Hmm. That distribution is very important because depending upon the distribution is this whole process of production as well as consumption in the economy. Why I say it is important? It is important because Depending on how much of resources you have, you make choices regarding how much to consume and how much to save and invest. Mm. And it is that investment. So when you say you, you are talking about any the agent, unit, any, any agent, agent in, the, in, the, in, an in an economy. It could be a producer again or a, or, or a, or a, household. Or a household. Who is consumed. No, but just, consumed. just a little diversion here. Yeah. This household, you know, suddenly you brought yeah. this term. Yeah. We started with the term called consumer. Yeah. And now you suddenly brought in this thing called household. Yeah. So in economy, we are actually identifying. Uh, three major agents hmm. in an economy hmm. or three groups of agents. Hmm. 
One, of course, the producers, that is firms and enterprises. Okay. Second, consumers, when we lump them together, we, we use households as a unit of analysis for that. Right. Because and it is easier or because they are related. Everything they're, is. Yeah. They're consumption related. is together. And consumption. See, there is, there is individual consumption and there are certain consumption that is joint. Joint. Yeah. So, to aggregate that, a, a household, household is, a, is a unit. Is, is, is a unit. Right. Then the third agent, of course, we know is government. Mm -hmm. Government is also a producer as well as, as a, a consumer, consumer in an economy. Mm -hmm. But to start off with a very simple model, we will use the two agent model. Mm -hmm. In the two agent model, there are only two, two clusters or two groups of agents. That is firms as well as the households. Households. Okay. Now, coming back to our, our earlier, earlier issue, that is the question of uh, distribution and its implication. So, Depending on the type of distribution, there will be decisions regarding investments as well as consumption. Why I am bringing investments? Investments is a part of savings. Right. Now, so what what is a savings? Savings it at one level is nothing but consumption postponed. Right. So, the household as an agent will uh, try and see, should I consume at a particular point in time T or should I postpone my consumption to T plus 1? If I am postponing my consumption to T plus 1, then I will save up what, whatever resource that The I reason have. you do that is because? Because your valuation of consuming something might be higher in T plus 1 huh. compared to T period. Huh. Like you may be saving for a pension. Any, pen, any kind of thing. For a retired because, life. Yeah. For example, or, today I am having my salary. Hmm. Now, I want to uh, consume a car within uh, 3 years. Right now, I don't have the You don't have the money to no. buy it. Uh -huh. So, I will, I will. You have to accumulate some amount of money before. And you can then buy. I will use that for right. my car. So, I am postponing the, con I would have loved to have the car today. If you can take a loan, you can. If I it. can take a loan. But if I take a loan again, then I, I have to re keep repaying. So, instead of that, I, I will, I will uh, have a decision that, okay, let me save up for three years and then see whether I have the resources. And uh -huh. at that point, I will consume. Right. So, the, the important thing to characterize the economy in this way is that, uh, Depending on this distribution, whether it is skewed to households or to producers, are these millions of decisions in an economy in terms of consumption, savings and investment. It is this investment that again goes back to production. So, so it is actually a, a cycle, production, consumption, which is actually aided by exchange. With the exchange, there is an underlying distribution process that is taking place in the economy. Along with the distribution, distribution, you mean how the money distribution yeah, of resources resources, the resources are being distributed? Yeah, yeah. Mm. and depending on that on, on that process of distribution, there will be uh, investments in the economy. Depending on the investments in the economy, there will be production in the economy. So, uh, so, so this is what economics. The, so this studying is, this. The, so this is basically uh, the real time activity of any economy. Now, right. why do I emphasize on this? I emphasize on this for one important reason that these are all interrelated. What is interrelated? All these five activities. I see. Yeah. For example, during this COVID crisis, we had lockdown. Hmm. Once when we had lockdown, the process of exchange was not smooth because even if I wanted to buy, I could not buy. The moment exchange was actually blocked, well, production also had to be blocked. Consumption is already blocked. So, so this uh, uh, with, with this five five kind of you know activities. If one of the five activity is stopped. actually stopped, hmm. then all the other, all other activities also also stopped. might slow down or eventually slow, stop. Now, once when uh, exchange is stopped, then the distribution is stopped. So some people will have resources, some people will not have resources. Once when distribution is actually stopped, then investments in the next time period will also be affected. Once when investment in the next time period is affected, then the production in the next time period is affected. So, there is a kind of a, it's a continuous process in the economy that, that goes. And all these five are basically interrelated. And any factor that, that is affecting one of them could eventually affect all of them. Now, when we talk this in a mutually interrelated kind of a process, uh, we can view this at two levels. One level of viewing it is at a micro decision making level. That is as a household or as an individual or as a firm, 
how do i uh, organize my consumption how do i organize my production and what is the kind of a distributional mechanism that i should have all those decision at the micro, micro level okay so that becomes the subject matter of microeconomics all this at the macro level we can visualize and for example when we talk about macro level it is basically aggregates hmm. aggregated at what level it is it is a matter of of one's choice i can view this in terms of the state level within tamil nadu economy what is happening i can view it in terms of uh, the national indian economy what is happening or even global economy because a lot of uh, uh, concerns came up in terms of how the global supply chains would affect actually production and you can do a sector you can do a sectoral thing hmm. yeah so that is basically a, an aggregate kind of an analysis which is called macroeconomics now what we shall do basically in our uh, in so just i mean just so you said micro so you said if you work at the level of a household or one firm yeah that would be micro yeah and the decisions that are happening within household yeah in order to make decisions on what to consume how to produce etc how to manage a budget yeah. something like that right yeah and uh, the allocation of resources in this case would be allocating your budget within amount that. of money to within yeah. the consumption basket yeah and the other side you have the firm which also has a, la- a large number of decisions to make yeah. in terms of what to produce yeah and you know what price to produce uh, what price to sell it or yeah. what how to, how to produce and wh- what are the resource allocations yeah. that they have to make various kinds of resources that yeah. they have manpower people yeah. capital yeah factory equipment whatever it is how do we allocate that to the different activities inside the firm this is basically some kind of a yeah so these is this, this is microeconomics right? these are two very important questions in micro microeconomics okay and the macroeconomics would be at the level where you would be discussing a sector or a state industry, or a country or industry, industry uh, aggregated aggregated like, yeah industry here we will define as an aggregation of firms aggregation of firms yeah. as an industry okay so we are basically a collection of firms in, in a specific sector sector would be an industry yeah and so you could do analysis at the industry level that would be macroeconomics yeah and there the questions we will be answering just like this allocation resource allocation questions what questions will be answering there yeah there there are also very important questions in terms of how are these resources getting utilized okay one two um what is the kind of a division in terms of these resources for example um is the savings aggregate savings in india is it increasing or is it decreasing okay it's very important because your Uh, aggregate what savings rate of uh, yeah it? savings rate of huh. an economy yeah because your uh, aggregate savings or savings rate uh, in turn determines your level of investment in the economy yeah. which in turn determines the level of uh, output or production in the economy right so those kind of uh, macro issues become very important now again in another uh, so something like a gdp growth rate if you take yeah that's a macro it's or a macro, macro question it's a macro concept and what and uh, what would be a micro concept price would be a micro concept price is micro and macro Oh, is it? Because oh. price is the is the variable that links all the micro concepts with the, the macro. Con- macro oh, I see. Okay. Uh huh. And that's why uh, price mechanism, determining price mechanism, plays a very important role in an economy. Because when we move from the micro to macro, macro. the role of price is in terms of inflationary process. Ah. Uh-huh. When we look at the prices at the micro level, it is basically welfare consequences. Mm-hmm. Because if uh, prices are very high. then you know people cannot afford cannot certain afford. things that affects their welfare consumers welfare consumers choices everything so price then has this important so the macro part of price is inflation is an inflationary story yeah and the micro part of price is actual price setting in the market actual price setting and its consequences in terms of uh, buying decisions consumption consumption decisions, decisions. Oh, okay very interesting very very interesting okay so now um, where does when we are this course is about data science right right where does data fit into all this in in all these variables it is data for example production data at the micro level and at the macro level we have to analyze why if you want to really understand decision making process in terms of a firm yeah for example we have to think of a firm as a, as a, a, a set of contracts with certain resources yeah ultimately it is you know firm where things are produced are a set of contracts hmm. and they have some limited resources this resource allocation then is a big question for the firm hmm. so we need to look at data 
in terms of how the firm is allocating these resources? What is the basis on which the firm is allocating the resources? Because any resource allocation has two important questions that, that it answers. One is the question related to efficiency in its utilization. Mm. Why? Because in economics, we start with the basic premise that resources are limited and, mm. you know, we can utilize it for various, various other possibilities. And that takes to the second uh, concept, which is very important. That is, there is always an opportunity cost. There is a trade-off. Mm. If I'm going to utilize a particular resource for the production of a particular commodity, mm. well, I have to weigh in the options in terms of I could utilize that for something else. Mm. So, there the concept of efficiency becomes very important. To analyze that, we need data. Trade-offs, basically. Trade-offs as well as the efficiency part of that. Mm. Now, for example, when a, uh, for a firm, when it when is to think about uh, resource allocation, we have to look at the efficiency of the firm. Mm. Mm. For which you need data. We need data. So, and it's firm level data. I mean, it's data of what's going on inside the firm. Inside the firm. Ah. And uh, that is basically captured in various efficiency uh, parameters. Mm. Yeah, It could be in terms of uh, energy efficiency. It could be in terms of certain productivity parameters, in terms of labor productivity, etc. Or there could be just profitability. Ultimately, Final outcome. Ultimately, that is what uh, that is what matters for the firm. Mm. Yeah. So here, here, or growth. Yeah. So here we are assuming that uh, the um, issues in terms of um, profitability as well as you know productivity are um, are actually uh, related mm. that is an efficient firm can can be productive and profitable mm. and an inefficient firm might not be able to be you know productive and profitable unless and unless there are certain market structures within which they operate and they can afford to be inefficient and then continue mm. so similarly this allocation you talked about resource allocation at the firm level yeah and uh, so, can can you speak about the household now? I mean, the other side. Yeah, in terms of household, well, uh, data in the household. Yeah, we all know that households have limited income. Mm. Whatever may be the kind of an income generation activity, there is an upper bound. Mm. Well, it depends on on the kind of you know activity that you undertake to generate income. In certain activities, incomes are higher. In certain other activities, incomes may be low. But there is an upper limit, an upper cap. So then a household has to really think in terms of how to utilize this income that is generated. For example, well, I, I took my, my own uh, example at the beginning. Like, you know, I have my limited monthly salary. Now, I have the possibility of buying a car. Yeah, I already have a small car, but I want to upgrade to a, a, a kind of a bigger car. Should I use my money for that or uh, should I use my money to put my son in a slightly better school? Mm. That's a decision which I have to make. Mm. At a mundane level, every day, every household is making a decision. Decision of this kind. Huh? In terms of consumption. Right. Yeah. Um, but are they using data for this? Well, uh, there, are, there are two levels it operates. Certain decisions, uh, we use data, but we don't organize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, we go to the supermarket and we purchase things. We look at the MRP or whatever it is, and then we compare sometimes across products. Actually, that is the data processing there that we are using. So that's why in in a lot of decisions, unknowingly we are consuming that data. Mm -hmm. In certain other decisions, we really go out and collect data. For example, the moment I decide to buy a car. I will go to the various dealers. I will look at what are the models. I will discuss with them. I will find out what are the kind of discounts that they can give me. What is the bonus or what is the exchange offer? Perhaps I might write down and bring it there into my home and then I will decide. I will. So that's a little more organized way. So in every decision, there is data. The only thing is that the formal analysis of data and the informal analysis of data is different in, in each of these contexts. And this is relation also, right? The guy who is producing, he needs data to find out whether or not his firm is efficient. Yeah. But he also needs data about the consumer, right? Yes. Because then only he knows what to produce yes. and how much to produce of each thing. Right? Yes. So he needs the consumption data of the household. Yes. 
So, where so something has to give him some method has to be there yeah. by so, which he can get hold of this consumption yeah, data, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, basically, the uh, decisions regarding in terms of uh, what to produce and how much to produce hmm. that is a function of the information that the producer producer has at any particular point in time. How do we collect it? There are various methods of collecting that from very simple kind of market surveys to slightly complicated or sophisticated demand estimations that we can use. Now, uh, market surveys, we know that, you know, people go out to the market and then, you know, they fill out this questionnaire and then they see what are the kinds of, you know, products that are demanded. Then they come back and analyze that and typical survey. But there is a problem in that the reach of the survey would be smaller and, you know, coverage in terms of geographical area might also be sometimes less, etc. But at a national level and the aggregate level, there are various agencies which collect data and one could use those data and then perhaps, you know, arrive at broad trends in the economy and then make your decision in terms of what to produce and how much to produce. So, what are these national level data? Sources? National level data, for, exa for example, in India, we have the uh, National Sample Survey Consumption Data, which is released by the uh, Central Statistical Office, CSO. And this data can be utilized to understand the consumption trends in India over time. And then we can see, and, and there's the basis on which we really say that, well, in another five years, consumption of certain commodities might actually be increasing while certain other commodities might come down. And, and there's a large scale survey across all states in India. And it so covers everything, everything. It, it, it covers, there are various rounds of it. And in each round, there are very specific surveys as well as there is a general. So, we would know, for example, how many people are using cooking gas, how many people are using coal. Yes, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. know that. Yes. Huh? Yeah. And, and, and we will also know how much of your money is spent in terms of food consumption. Within food, how much is spent for, you know, pulses or grains or egg or meat or whatever consumption. I see. Yeah. We'll know whether ACs are being sold ACs in summer. Are being sold or mobile phones. Will you know whether sold. it's being sold in summer or winter, more more in summer, less in winter? No, that we can't use that data. That is because these are some kind of an annual surveys. Huh. So, the timing might not be sometimes appropriate. For that, you need specific market uh, ah, research ah, kind of, ah. of data. Right. But we know how many refrigerators are sold, how many air yes. conditioners are sold. Or, uh, how how or, are they changing? Or for sure, we will know that how many households in India have a refrigerator. Oh, okay. How many were having it 10 years back and how many are having it now? Now. So, if you can compare it over time, then we will know that, well, the People market, becoming richer. market is actually growing and we are actually consuming more. And Yeah. So, okay. uh, so when we put this is interesting. So, so broad picture I got basically is that in economics we have micro macro what you explain. Yeah. There's a linkage between micro and macro through price. Right. Maybe some other variables also. Yes. yes. Okay, but price is one important variable yeah. that links macro. Obvious and, macro. and it is yeah. seen to us. Macro at an aggregate level, micro is this, and whether you do micro or macro, both need data. Yeah. And there are sources for data. Yes. And hopefully we will see some of the data. Right. Huh? Yes. And we will poke through the data and try and see if it makes sense or not. Yeah, some of the trends we can okay. look at. Okay, nice. Let's see. Okay. okay.